Hey guys, welcome to Bullish Bets. On this channel, we cover all things related to stocks and investing. We take a look at news where we can make some potential big bets with huge upsides. In this video, we're going to talk about DraftKings. Before we get started, keep in mind that we're not financial advisors and this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Make sure you do your own research before making any investment decisions. So let's talk about DraftKings. Now, DraftKings had made huge strides since its uh, creation in 2012, where it was just doing fantasy sports. Now, with less regulations uh, between states and more partnerships, DraftKings has potential to hit $100 by the end of the year, which is around a $45 billion market cap. This is huge. So in our honest opinion, after doing our research, you now it has a huge possibility of hitting $100. You now first let's let's get into the stock price. Right now it's at $60.72. You know, its high was at 70 around $70.07. You know, it took a huge dip uh, due to the bloodbath of a market it was last last week uh, down to 54, but it's still fairly strong. And there's a lot of fundamental strength that DraftKings has. You know, it has a lot of partnerships that's recently announced. Uh, for example, I had a partnership with Dish Network uh, to do their sports betting with them. You know, Dish Network has a lot of relationships in terms of you know streaming sports, uh, sports networks, and working with DraftKings gives them the ability to acquire these customers. On top of that. You know, DraftKings announced their deal with UFC. They're now going to have sports books for UFC. And a, there's a lot of fan base and customer base who are in the UFC that DraftKings can tap into to uh, acquire customers within that market. It's huge for them. So let's get into the analyst day presentation uh, that DraftKings provided to give us a better feel of the company and you know the future growth potentials. So if we look at the green states, it shows that uh, these are the mobile authorized states for DraftKings. And if you look at it, it's only a handful of states. And the or orange states are the legislation being considered. So this gives a lot of room for DraftKings to grow just due to a lightning of regulations. This will allow them to grow their customer bases without you know, changing too much, but just uh, increase in the market size. So, DraftKings did this numbers on in, t in terms of legalized population of sports betting and iGaming, and they did their calculations, and it yields up to 2.9 to 4.7 billion dollars in revenue a year for DraftKings just with uh, the the lightning of registration uh, legislation. I'll link this presentation in the description below so you guys can take a look. But you know, this is huge potential as there is a less of a negative connotation into sports betting. It's being washed away and it's becoming more normalized, which you know more likely will be legalized in certain states. So what makes DraftKings great is because it comes to mind in customers first who are into fantasy sports and sports books and online gaming and stuff like that you know usually in the di digital usually in the digital age geography doesn't matter so the best product gets chosen by most people for example we choose google over Bing and Yahoo most of the time because it's the best service. You know, there's no ge geographic limitation like uh, retail stores and like and stuff like that. So when customers choose have name brands in their mind, they're gonna choose the top one. And DraftKings seems to be the top uh, provider of sports books and uh, fantasy sports at this moment. You know, and all. Given the fact that this presenta presentation is get, uh, presented by DraftKings, you know we should take it with some uh, skepticism. But it does show that DraftKings is 
very fa- fairly popular in the sports betting uh, market. If if we continue looking at this presentation, the app ratings for DraftKings is higher than most of its competitors like FanDuel's, PointBet, uh, William Hill, and Bet America and stuff like that. It's just DraftKings has great ratings and it's a great user interface where people generally like. And the amount of time that a person spends on DraftKings is also the highest. And what what's interesting is DraftKings is doing iGaming and with legislation of gambling becoming loosened, you know, they're primed and positioned in the right place to optimize in all three aspects in terms of fantasy sports, sports books, and iGaming. And this gives them a lot of room to cross sale and sell and a lot of room to increase the revenue exponentially. So if we look at you know, the revenue retention that they offer, the lifetime value of each customer is increasing by threefold. So if we look at uh, the blocks right here, the orange block re- represents uh, 2015. Uh, we started the 2018 area because you know, they introduced online sports books and iGaming. And, and this is where they cross sell uh, these products to fantasy sports users you know if you compare the the orange block in 2018 to in 2018 to 2015 it nearly five times the amount of spending and if you compare the red block which is to the year 2018 to 2019 estimates it's almost three times so the lifetime of value of each customer is increasing exponentially so the cost of acquisition of customers can uh, be increased for DraftKings because each customer is spending more. It, each cus- each customer acquisition is worth more to them because of these different products they just introduced with their uh, mergers and their acquisitions. And this is what really gives room for DraftKings to grow. Uh, if we take a look at the revenue uh, from the Q4 earnings, uh, it, it's the end of year 2020 was at 614 million. Uh, and the last three months, just Q4 alone, was $322 million. Uh, The $322 uh, for one quarter is almost, tw- almost the whole Q1, Q2, and Q3 combined. It's literally half of the revenue for the year. And it shows that this, is, this type of growth DraftKings is experiencing is exponential. And with the loosening of le- legislation and... Uh, the cross-selling, it's continue, going to continue to be exponential growth. And we're going to compare this to national uh, Penn National Gaming, uh, which is a, a gambling company. Uh, if we look at the numbers for Penn National, it's been steady around uh, the $3, $3 billion range, $3.5 billion range. Uh, I, I'm not sure what happened in 2019, but it jumped us to 5 and fell back down to 35 but that being said, you know, Penn National Gaming isn't experienced the ex- experiencing the exponential growth that DraftKings ex- is experiencing because they don't have those type of cross sells that DraftKings has. They don't have the type of relationships that DraftKings has. You know, they have relationships with the NFL in terms of fantasy sports. Uh, they have relationships with UFC, and now they're they're having joint ventures with a dish and cable network providers which will continue to in- increase their customer bases and this will in- continue to increase their revenue because the lifetime value is multiplied you know this is very exciting for DraftKings because each customer is worth so much to them right now and on top of that smart people and big players are getting in the game you know Kathy Woods claimed that she's bullish on DraftKings. You know, as of early February, she she bought uh, 1.4 million shares with their uh, Arc Next Generation and her Arc FinTech Innovation. She bought 546 thousand shares. That's that's almost a total total of 120 million dollars worth of shares, and it sh- this shows that she's very bullish. And it's not just Kathy Woods, who 
have has this foresight there's other institutional investors that are making this bet also if you look at the uh, institutional holdings for DraftKings. The increased positions is uh, 58 million shares versus a decreased positions of uh, 38 million shares, and this shows that there's a 20 million dollar, 20 million share difference, and this really shows that they have long-term uh, views for DraftKings and their potential, and we do too and this is why it has a great capability of reaching a hundred dollars by the end of the year you know what do you guys think do you think DraftKings can easily go up to a hundred dollars by the end of the year you know do you see the potential uh, of DraftKings with the larger market size that it's able to acquire customers with the loosening of regu regu regulations you know is now the time to buy DraftKings you know whether short term long term or maybe you have a whole different view of it that DraftKings might, you know, collapse and go down to zero. What 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 are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. You know, if you that's it for this video. If you liked our content, you know, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And you know, we would really appreciate it as it, it helps us with this, you know, mysterious YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much again for watching and stay tuned for the next one.